As President Bola Tinumbo marks his first year in office, his administration's focus on economic reforms has been a central theme. The federal government has been working tirelessly uh, to revitalize Nigeria's economy, particularly the development of industries, trade, and investments. One of the key areas of government's efforts include reforms designed to stimulate uh, economic activities, attract investment, promote sustainable development, to position Nigeria as a competitive player in the global market. What more do we need to know? Well, I'm being joined by the right person. He's a senior special advisor to the president on industry, trade, and investment. He joins me live from our Abuja studios, Mr. John Ugochuku. Thank you so much. Good afternoon, Mr. Ugochuku. It's good to have you on the program. Uh, good afternoon. Thanks for having me. And yes. Uh, we, yes, great. Thank you so much for that. Uh, first, my question will start this way. We know a lot has been done, and President Bola Tinumbu has continued to be well, the chief marketing officer of Nigeria. Everywhere he's traveled to, he's telling them Nigeria is open for business. You are the senior special assistant now on trade, industry, and investment. How open is Nigeria for business at this time, in your understanding? Oh, well, Nigeria is open for business, and the approach is really underpinned by the reforms that the governments have put in place in order to create a conducive environment for uh, businesses to want to locate in Nigeria. Uh, we have to situate this in the context of global competitiveness, whereby a lot of, in the aftermath of COVID, a lot of company, uh, countries are competing essentially for uh, the global pool of funds to come to their, uh, to their economies, uh, particularly as we begin to get back from the uh, dislocations that were caused by uh, COVID-19. So for Nigeria, we, uh, the reforms that the government have put in place have been geared uh, specifically to make Nigeria to be a more conducive environment to provide those incentives that will um, incentivize uh, global capital to rather come to Nigeria than go into somewhere else. So um, there's a popular adage that says uh, capital is fleet-footed and will only go to an environment where it is secure and where there's visibility into uh, potential returns. And that's clearly what the reforms that the government have put in place uh, is, t is targeted to do is to encourage and incentivize uh, global pools of capital that are looking for secure environments to come in, to come to Nigeria, as opposed to the other competitive places that are seeking the same uh, capital. Mm. Now, we see uh, concentrated efforts aimed at, of course, reforms like you identified. But my question really would be, are you sure that these are being deployed towards specific needs of Nigerians? Do you think that is what is happening at the moment, looking at the reforms and um, the fallout of some of these reforms? So let's, let's take a look at uh, the reforms and what it is uh, slated to do. Uh, some of the challenges, if I were to uh, group the challenges that Nigeria is facing into two broad buckets. I will say one bucket really is um, macro uh, volatilities, if you will. And then the other bucket, it's around um, improving the productivity of the economy. Uh, around more, uh, macro volatilities, this speaks to uh, you know, the exchange rates, it, it speaks to uh, interest rates. Uh, the efforts that uh, the government have put in that regard with the work that the CBN have been doing and, as we can see, have manifested in um, the strengthening of the Naira and it's creating a more stable environment from a macro standpoint and also what um, the monetary policies that have been put in place to, uh, to try to reflect a real interest rate uh, and also to plug leakages around the whole um, uh, exchange rate issue and trying to unify, as we've done at successfully unified exchange rates, all speaks to uh, addressing uh, the macro issues and creating a more stable macro environment. And that has direct impact to the second bucket, which is 
productivity of the economy. Because when there's a stable macro environment, people have visibility into what the exchange rates would be if they were to bring their money in. Uh, they would know at, at least there's some sense of uh, when they're ready to take their money out in terms of dividend or whatnot, that, those, uh, that the money will be available for them to be, to be able to exit the investments that they've made. Uh, and when they know that the macro environment and the uh, variables that affect that macro environment tend to be stable uh, and are predictable, they are more uh, incentivized to, to come into our environment. They are more incentivized to come and invest. And on the product, uh, productivity side, it, it really speaks to when that money now comes in, after you've stayed, uh, you stabilize the uh, micro environment and the money has now come in, to what extent are you able to generate additional returns on, on that investment? Uh, are you able to generate two, three, four, five times? And your ability to generate exponential returns on every dollar or every narrow of investment, uh, it goes a long way in your ability to mobilize more capital and increase the productivity of your, um, of your economy. And in order to do that, you have to uh, identify those aspects of your economy that have huge multiplier effects that have the impact to transform, to be transformative. And uh, one of the key areas that often uh, that demonstrates such uh, potential often is in infrastructure. And by government focusing on infrastructure through the, renewable, uh, through the Renewed Hope Infrastructure Fund, it is uh, attempted to address one of the biggest hurdles to productivity, which is uh, the enabling infrastructure for businesses to operate at a lower cost. Because if businesses are, operate at a higher cost, whether in terms of cost of transportation or cost of energy, that, those costs ultimately are passed on to the customers and it has an inflationary effect. By attempting to address the issues around uh, infrastructure through the renewable, uh, Renewed Hope Infrastructure mm -hmm. Fund, it, it's attacking one of the key uh, hurdles to our productivity, which is high transport costs and high energy costs. And with uh, success in that regard, it's going to manifest in higher productivity and it's going to manifest in lower cost of uh, business and it's going to manifest in higher returns for investors. So that's one aspect, one, one aspect of how this is going to impact ordinary Ni Nigerians in, in being able to reduce the cost of goods which then makes it more affordable for us to purchase uh, goods and services. And then uh, the other aspect uh, of the reform and how it impacts Nigerians is also in able to build the capacity of Nigerian businesses, uh, in able to uh, scale them up, in giving them the right tools and uh, the right tools that they need to be able to compete in a global environment, uh, in a, uh, our ability for them to uh, we, we live in an environment where uh, most of our citizens are very entrepreneurial. Uh, so there's an opportunity for local capital formation. So being able to give them the right tools and access to finance for them to be able to scale up, have the right uh, skill sets to be, to be able to enter into business and compete uh, competitively, it's another reform that government has really focused on. And the first action that the president really did in this regard was the palliatives. Over two hundred billion dollars, two hundred billion naira. Uh, I beg your pardon, two hundred billion naira that was earmarked as palliatives to be distributed to uh, nano businesses, uh, micro businesses, and low interest loans to medium and large manufacturers. And what this is supposed to do is act as a fiscal stimulus in providing access to finance that can allow them to. Uh, hire more expertise, allow them to invest in their businesses so that they can be more efficient and allows them to expand their businesses for the ones who are already operating and for the ones looking to enter new markets and scale up, it allows them to do that as well by being able to provide cheap financing, which is often uh, the one of the biggest hurdles to businesses uh, being able to scale in Nigeria. And as businesses scale, then they are going to hire more people, we have lower unemployment, and uh, we have the per capita income 
of our citizens increase. So that's another reform that is targeted at um, being able to upscale the capacity of Nigerians, both businesses and uh, ordinary individuals. Uh, there are also other reforms in the area of um, equipping Nigerians to have the right skill set to compete globally. We live in an environment that is increasingly being dictated by the knowledge economy and the ability of our citizens to be able to participate in that digital and knowledge e economy is really um, it, it's, it's an imperative. And in that regard, uh, uh, under the Ministry of Trade and Investment, uh, 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 the Honorable Minister Doris Anite has launched the uh, what is called the Super, uh, the Skill Up Artisans, which it's um, which is designed to provide our artisans with uh, critical skills to be able to. Um, have employable skills or even uh, develop their own businesses. Mm -hmm. We have the NATEP program, which prepares Nigerians to compete for jobs, digital jobs, that are not necessarily in Nigeria, but in outside of the country, and even to position Nigeria as, uh, as a location, favorable location for digital outsourcing, uh, for business process outsourcing, for tele, uh, uh, for uh, for tele, um, telemarketing, for uh, different uh, services that uh, are not required to be, you are not required to be present physically to, for you to be able to, uh, to be able, for you to be able to offer such services. We've seen India being able to utilize uh, business process as a platform for growth, and we are positioning Nigeria for the same thing. And uh, also, but to build that, you have to have adequate infrastructure. You have to have uh, uh, energy. You have to have uh, access to, to the Internet. And in that regard, the uh, government, through the Ministry of Digital Communications, Innovation, and Digital Economy, is laying 96,000 kilometers of fiber across the country, which will enhance and provide improved access for every Nigerian to be able to get on, on the internet. And what this does is that with that access to the internet, it opens up a number of possibilities within the knowledge economy space, opens up a number of possibilities for people to creatively uh, uh, start uh, uh, creating uh, uh, digital jobs, uh, digital businesses. And as we can see, uh, we've, we've done quite good in that regard with uh, many of the so-called unicorns in Nigeria, in Africa, uh, many of them being of Nigerian origin. So this is a, 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 a trend that the government is looking to even push further so that we, we don't have only six, six or seven unicorns. We have, you know, multiples of that. And the starting point to do that is to provide the enabling infrastructure. So I'll, I'll stop there. I hope this has provided some sort of uh, sense around the specific reforms that government is pushing on ties to uh, the, uh, the yes benefits. yes you have indeed done that uh, brilliantly I, I, I must say finally uh, wrapping up this conversation trade facilitation remains key and the flip-flop around the FX and of course um, the rates for exchange and the customs is something that business people are talking about uh, yes I know you can't control the rates of FX but what more are we doing uh, around that part, at least to make it easier for people to bring in products and all of that, then uh, it's a two-in-one question. When are we likely to get off this transition time? Many say we are seeing a time where we're moving to start seeing inclusive growth that's following these reforms. When do you think the positives will start to trickle in? Uh, it's everything, I will say, happens slowly and all at once. Uh, it's yeah. like an iceberg. You're seeing the tip of the iceberg, but a lot of it is on the ground. So there's a lot of work that is happening, um, and we are going to see the manifestations of all the reforms that are being put in place. And I'll start with the initial question you asked around trade facilitation. I mean, there are two key initiatives mm -hmm. that His Excellency the President has put into place. One, I would like to highlight it, the reconstitution of PEBEC, which is the Presidential Ease of Doing Business uh, Initiative. Uh, that was started on the previous administration, but, but was continued in this administration because of the role it does in, 
in, in, in, in, in lowering the barriers to doing business. And that is a very key uh, initiative that manifested in the Business Facilitation Act, uh, which goes to uh, hold specific agencies responsible, uh, accountable for um, what they do from enabling a business environment. So in, you know, we often accuse the Nigeria of not, there's no continuity of government, uh, policy somersaults, but this is a, a, an example of a good initiative that started under the previous administration and has been continued and strengthened under the new administration because of the role it plays in uh, creating that conducive environment. that we talk about and is the key incentive for driving businesses to locate in Nigeria. Then the other one, it's the single window system, uh, single Mr. John Ugochuku. Yeah, I think um, network issues there, trying to connect with um, Mr. John Ugochuku, wanted to make that final point while we wrap up this uh, segment of the interview. Uh, Mr. Ugochuku, are, are you back? All right, then. I think that will be it for our first chat with uh, Senior Special Advisor to the President on Trade, Industry, and Investment.